Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. Now in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at one of the professional tools here in Luminar Neo. More specifically, we will be looking at the Super Contrast tool. Now the Super Contrast tool precisely adjusts tonal contrast with six distinct controls spanning highlights, midtones and shadows. And it does allow you to finely tune the results. Now, once again, we are here in Luminar Neo, we are in the edit module and we are all the way on the bottom of our toolbar here, focusing on the professional section with the Super Contrast tool. Now, to be honest, Super Contrast tool is one of my favorite tools here in Luminar Neo because when I work on my landscape photos, I really like to have a very detailed control over what I'm editing. And I have nothing against the traditional contrast slider, but I think these three sliders can give you so much more. So as always, we're going to start by describing each one of the sliders and then we will jump into some examples and try to see how we can use this tool on them. To describe the sliders, we will use this example right here. And one more time, remind ourselves what's the difference between the highlights and shadows. Now, the highlights represent the brightest parts of your image. And when you look at the example, it will be the area here. In the opposite, the shadows represents the darkest areas of your image and it's going to be on the other side of the image in this part. And then to cover it with the midtones, that's the area highlighted with the red uh, frame and that's the area in between those two. So starting with the three sliders we have available, we have the highlights contrast, midtones contrast and shadows contrast. Now, these sliders refine the amount of contrast in highlights, midtones, and shadows, respectively. Now, dragging them to the right increases the contrast. So, let's push the highlight contrast. And as you can see, when I push it around, you can see how it really only affects this part of the image. So this is where we push the contrast. Now, before we jump further, just a quick reminder, when we're using these sliders, I really want you to go ahead and push them as much as you can so you understand what they do to your image. After that, you can come back and refine them to your liking. Second of all, uh, when you want to reset any of the sliders, all you need to do is to double click on their name and they reset to zero or their default value. So once again, highlights contrast right here. Then we have the midtone contrast. So it's very much similar. Only difference is that it actually um, affects the mid of our image here and the midtones on your image. So once again, as you can see, we are controlling the contrast in the middle of the spectrum. And to finish it off, the shadows, we're going to adjust the contrast in the darkest area of the image. And when we push it, you can see how it's affecting only this part of the image. So those were the contrast sliders. And now it's time to look at the balance sliders. Now, as you can see, they are now available. And the main reason is that just like many times in Luminar Neo, they are connected directly with the slider above them. So when I bring the slider to zero, you can see that they are grayed out and we can use them. And when I open the slider, you can see suddenly they become available. So we have a highlights balance, midtones balance and shadows balance. So what they do, these three balance sliders define the midpoint for each respective zone. Basically what they do, they push 
either the darker parts of the image on or the brighter parts image on. And by doing that, they allow you to define which areas of your image are treated as highlights, midtones or shadows. So once again, let's have a look at it. Starting with the highlights, focusing on this brightest area of the image, we can push the highlights balance towards the right. And as you can see, the area is becoming a little bit darker. And when we push it the other way around, you can see the area is getting brighter. So again, we reset it by double clicking on it. Moving into the mid-tone balance. When we push the slider towards the right, the area is getting darker. When we push it towards the left, the area is getting brighter. And finally, with the shadows, when we push the shadows balance towards the right, the area is getting darker and really the darkness is pushing towards the center. And when we push it the other way around, you can see the area got a little bit brighter. So those were the sliders for the super contrast tool. Now, uh, this was mainly to explain you how they work and which parts of your image they're going to affect. Now let's jump into catalog and let's try them on some real images. So now we are in the catalog module and as you can see, we have four examples here. Now we're going to be working on them and it's just a quick reminder. If you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump in the description, then click there. It will bring you to our Dropbox account and from there you can download the same sample files. So as you can see, we have four different situations here. We have the landscape, portrait, black and white and interior design and we're going to try to tool on each one of them. So let's start with the landscape image and what we need to do as always is to bring it into the edit module. Here in the edit module, once again, we are focusing on our toolbar and on the super contrast tool. So let's make sure we can see all of it and let's start by pushing the sliders. Now, whenever we work on the super contrast tool, I quite like to start by adjusting the highlights first, then the midtones and the shadows. So let's start by pushing the highlights. So when I do that, as you can see, I'm affecting the brightest area of the image. So when I push it all the way, you can see that we bringing some details back in the sky. And then let's see before again on the water and also on the river. So by doing that, I'm affecting the brightest area of the picture. So I don't want it all the way, but somewhere where I get a little bit more details in the sky. So around here. Then we move into the midtones. Let's see what we are affecting there. So we are affecting certain parts of the sky, definitely also parts of this little field and the foliage. So let's try to see. Yeah, definitely maybe somewhere around here works very well. And finally, we're going to go back to the shadows. So we're going to be looking at the darker areas of the image here, here and here. And when we push the contrast, you can see we actually make them a little bit brighter. So that way we add a little bit of contrast into the darker areas of the image. So I think somewhere around here. Once I'm happy with the contrast sliders, then I go and try to shift the highlights balance. Once I'm happy with the contrast sliders, I go in and try to adjust the balance sliders. So starting again with the highlights, let's see. I don't want to make them brighter. If anything, maybe just a touch darker would be a good idea. Then when we move into the midtones, same thing again. Let's see what do I want to do with the midtones. Actually, probably leave them, if anything, a little bit brighter. So doing something like this and then moving into the shadows. Let's see, we can make them brighter and open them even more or we can make them really dark. But I think we probably make them a little bit brighter. So something like this. Now, by using the tool, you can see that we got three other options here. The first one is to see before and after individually for this tool. Then we have the add mask and then we have the reset the slider. So by clicking on that, you can reset the tool completely. So for me again, let's see before and after. And I think the result is quite nice. It all getting a little bit more contrasty and it's gaining some additional impact. So this was a landscape photo. Now let's try it on a portrait photo. So again, back in a catalog module and we're going to be working on a portrait image, bringing it into the edit module and coming all the way down to the super contrast tool. Now looking at the picture, it's very lovely. There is a lot of beautiful details, but it's a little bit washed out. So let's see if we can help to it. So the workflow will be same again. We're going to be adjusting the highlights first, then the midtones first, and we're going to finish it with the shadows contrast first. So starting with the highlights, we're going to try to remove some of the shine from the center of her face. So we can do that very easily by pushing the highlights contrast up a little bit. 
I think that's about right. So maybe somewhere around here. Then we move into the midtones and see what they do. So they bring some nice color into her cheeks and into the hair. Also a little bit of the eyebrows. So I think that works quite nicely. Let's just keep an eye on that. So somewhere around here. And finally, we jump into the shadows and see if that's going to help. And I wouldn't do too much because we're making the image brighter again. So let's just keep it somewhere around 16. Now again, we're going to adjust the balance. So come back to highlights. Let's see the highlights balance. I think if anything, we're probably going to bring it somewhere around 17. Then in the midtones, we can make the midtones brighter or darker. But I think we make them a little bit darker. And then in the shadows, I would actually make the shadows a little bit darker to make it a little bit more contrasting. So from here, once again, we're going to check the before and after. And you can see we remove some of the washed out effect from the image and brought back some of the colors and again created a little bit more impact. So this is how I would use this tool on portrait image. And now let's see how it would work on a black and white image. The picture number three is representing the black and white image I was talking about. And we're going to use this beautiful cityscape. So again, we're going to bring it into the edit module. And this picture was already black and white. I haven't transferred it to black and white here in Luminar. However, if you would want to do that, you can do that simply by using the black and white tool. So let's go back to our super contrast. And again, starting with the highlights. So let's push that and see what is doing to us. So it's helping in this part of the image, definitely. And we just leave it somewhere around 50, 59. Then let's jump into the midtones and let's see. The midtones definitely making more contrast in the center of the image where there are some darker spaces, but I would probably push it somewhere around 70. I think that looks very, very cool. And to finish it off, we have the shadows contrast. And again, we just opening the shadows, but we will adjust that in a second. And from here, we're going to be going into the highlights balance and adjust that. Now we can make them darker. However, what I quite like is actually push them up and make it a little bit brighter. So somewhere around 20. Then we can jump into the midtones and see the midtones balance. Now we can brighten it up or darken it. And I actually probably like them a little bit darker. And to finish it off, we can have a look at the shadows and we can make them brighter or darker. But to be honest, I would probably leave them where they were. I think something like this. So again, let's have a look at the before and after, before and after. The change is quite subtle and it really depends on what result you're trying to bring. You can make it super contrasty by pushing the highlights contrast all the way and bringing it up and then the mid-tone contrast up and make them really darker and see what you prefer. So that way you would get much more contrasty result and the difference would be something like this. So this would be before and this would be after. Again, very much artistic decision. However, great to know that this tool also work on black and white image and it can make a big difference. And to finish it off, we have example number four representing the interior design. So again, heading into the edit module and from here going into our super contrast tool. You already know the drill. We're going straight for the highlights contrast. So let's start by that. And I think that helps a little bit just to remove some of the shine and the extra glow. Moving into the midtones contrast, let's have a look. It does introduce some of the glow here and then also working on some of these areas. I don't want to push it too much because I think we're introducing back some extra saturation and we don't want to do that. And finally, the shadows. Again, we need to be careful there because we're just reintroducing some extra brightness back, but somewhere between 10 or 20 would do. So then we're going back to our balance. So starting with the highlights, let's see brighter or darker. Uh, we can make it brighter outside, maybe just a little bit, something like this. Then in midtones, we want to make the interior darker or brighter. So I think to add a contrast compared to highlights, we make them a little bit darker. And to finish it off in the shadows, again, we can open them up or we can make them a little bit darker. Now, there are not that many shadow areas here. However, still, we can add extra contrast with this. Once again, looking at the before and after, and I think the result is very, very nice. Again, you would have to implement some of the other tools to push it even further. But I think when it comes to contrast, this is super handy and it can make a nice difference to your image. 
So before we're gonna finish today, once again, let's wrap up the Super Contrast tool. So we have a two sets of sliders. First of all, the contrast sliders that includes the highlights contrast, mid-tone contrast, and shadow contrast. And each one of them is very good at refining the amount of contrast in highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. Again, dragging them to the right increases the contrast in the specific area, as you can see. Then we have the second set of sliders, the highlights balance, mid-tones balance, and shadows balance. And these sliders uh, define the midpoint for each respective zone. They allow you to define the areas of your image and define how they are treated, if they are treated as the highlights, mid-tones, or shadows. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Yeah.